I want to talk to to the youth, the young people of this country. The destiny of this country lies in our hands. And the future of this country is also in our hands. You know, now this is the the truth, whether we like it or not. It's a bitter truth that if this country is to is to progress or is to collapse, that decision lies in our hands only. Now, if we are to take up uh, this fight upon ourselves, then we can rebellate ourselves. Then we can get this country right. I'm Michael Mwashindange. I am a, I'm a national student leader. And I'm also the national leader for the youths in the Independent Patriots for Change, that is IPC. I was born in a small village in uh, the Enana constituency in Angwena region. I lost my parents when I was uh, 11 years old. After that, I started living with uh, my grandmother, who I'm still living with her until today. I used to travel about 60 kilometers a day to and from school. Sadly, Michael is not alone in his experience. Countless other young people face similar hardships every day. We wanted to understand the experience of Namibian youth and hear their voices. Hi, uh, my name is Angelina Jacob. I'm 18 years old. Okay, Angelina, um, the question today that we're going to pose to you is um, what is your experience of the youth of Namibia and how do you perceive the future of the youth? Well, actually, being a youth in Namibia, it's really not easy since it's, it's the situation is just a bit too extreme when it comes to now the socially and how people are actually living since we are not really, really supported due to our backgrounds and so all sort kind of things. Seeing the future, it's, um, I feel like it's gonna change. It's, it's actually gonna get better, but for now, I, I, I can say right for now, it's not really getting better. It's kind of due to the whole pandemic and stuff. It's getting a bit worse. It's, it's when it comes to my, um, it, when it's school-wise, when it comes to my parent, because I'm from a single parent family, when it comes to my mother really struggling to pay, to fund everything for me, it's, it, it has really been a, a whole struggle because then she has to, you know, work overnight and sometimes she even has to be making time to sell some stuff just to really provide my taxi money and all food and stuff like that. And really, it has been a struggle since it, it somehow affected me in a way that some, some days I don't even attend school because just that time when she didn't even make enough money or maybe she got paid late, it, it kind of, it, it sucks sometimes. Mm -hmm. Here we struggle sometimes, even when you are young and then your mom passes on. Then when you are young, you have to take care of your younger siblings. Then you have to become the breadwinner at a young age. There are people that are struggling mostly in my class. Some, they come to school, they don't have taxi money, so it's hard for them. It's really hard for them. So, like now it's winter, people are, some of them are working for so far to go to Eros. I mean, it's even cold. Yeah. Uh, I was overhearing what you got, your conversation about the youth. Most of us are discouraged in school, so they they stand in the people, but we are often forced to do to be with books. So I I personally I'm not an academic that kind of person at all. So I just decided let me just go do something that I am good at. That I I cannot be waking up every morning going to do something that I'm not comfortable doing. And in most cases, you get teased because you're failing. So I was just like, no, I cannot 
do this to myself so I decided I'm dropping out and doing something that I like doing. To be honest with you is that I grow up in the struggling way. Uh, sometimes uh, I could come from school not eating. And you know, when you come and you have a sister and you have your nieces, you don't have food at home. And how you come and you look at your family, you start tears, cry, you, you start crying. So it's tough when you come at home, there's no food. And your mom is not there, she went to drink. Growing, growing up as, as, as the only guy in the family, it was tough for me. I have to go look for work. Uh, when I drop up from my grade 10, I have to go look for, for work to provide my family in the house. So that was the most bad thing and I don't want uh, my, my kids to, to go through the same way that I went, I went through. So for me, I have to invest in my, my kids that are coming, the, the new generation. I have to motivate them, I have to tell them. You don't have to go through like what I went through. After hearing these stories, we started wondering, is our education system really setting up our youth for success? The Zambezi region has some of the highest unemployment rates in Namibia. And that is why we wanted to hear from the Zambezi people directly. What do they think? It's heartbreaking knowing that they are among the most educated, they have qualifications, but they are rooming around the streets. The only place where you can get them is drinking outlets where they are taking out their frustrations because they don't have jobs. There's no many recruitment facilities that can keep them busy. There's no uh, projects that can absorb them. They are not getting enough funding to be self-initiative so that they can create jobs for themselves. So it's really, really heartbreaking. The, the link between basic education and the tertiary education is not there. The basic education in itself does not speak to tertiary. As a result, tertiary is, is, is left with no option but to train for the streets. It's the reason we have the highest unemployment because there's no jointism from basic education to tertiary education. In other words, what you study in grade 12 only applies 20% at university. They say that basically, for example, if you want to study towards being a lawyer, you need to have history and geography at grade 12 level. But tell me, what has that got to do with criminology and justice and uh, uh, commercial law subjects and criminal law that you find at UNAM? So there is no coherent link between basic and tertiary education. As a result, you find that a, a, a child that did very well at grade 12 fails at UNAM. Why? Because they are learning a new curriculum for the first time that's not intertwined. Now we have a problem of the fact that we don't have a government that is trying to narrow that gap and link the, work, the, 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 link the basic education sector to the tertiary sector and then basically link the tertiary sector to the, to the job market. As a result, universities are training for the streets. The nurses are here, the teachers are here. You'll find that the young people, 400 of them, they are going for an interview for a single teaching post. 400 invited for, for a written test, just one post. And also to add on that one, you will find that the young people, some of them have got innovative ideas so that they can start their own businesses and employ themselves. But now they don't have startup capital, the money, the institution, the banks, they are asking them for collateral. But where will a young person find a collateral such as a house or money in the account if such a person did not even uh, have a single employment? So these are some of the challenges the young people are facing. Our journey took us to the Katatura Youth Centre. We were looking for someone who works with young people on a daily basis. The difficulties were becoming clearer and clearer but there was still so much more to be said. So basically my question to you is, what's your role here at the Youth Centre and what do you experience as the biggest struggle the youth of Namibia is facing today? Hmm. Okay, my role here, I'm a youth officer. 
we face a lot of challenges because not we are not all intellectual not every person is intellectual youth have different um how can i say potential someone to do art someone to sing someone to be self-employed and most of our youth also what i've seen they want to be employed by organizations they cannot start up their own business if they start up their own business some of them they end up not uh, being successful because the youth don't know how to manage that to be a success they want to the youth want to succeed like overnight you don't just become rich overnight there are years that go by and there's hard work that needs to go by for your business to to succeed some of our youth who who have let me say have gone to different tertiary institutions they only want to work in certain towns so because i'm only focusing on applying in windhoek i don't want to go work at the village you end up being unemployed for quite a number of years because windhoek has quite a number of people and the competition is very high compared to rural areas so we end up having a lot of youth who are unemployed those who have their qualifications and those also dropouts who don't have um, qualifications We started to really understand the problems the youth face. But what are the solutions? In most cases, like here in my community, these people that have different talents. I have a cousin that is very good at welding, but he never did go to school. Of, he, he knows how to do like different stuff with his hands. Now most of the time is uh, vocational uh, centers, you have to pay also. So. It's kind of difficult also to go to a vocational center and you don't have income or anywhere to help you. So I went to Eros Girls School and I did hairdressing and that helped me really, I, I, some, I got some income by doing it. Yeah, because I was speaking too much like people laughed at me when I left school to go to Eros Girls School. But yeah. then some of us are opening our own businesses, we are trying to open our own businesses. I mean, so it's, it's just, I don't know, I just, I personally feel really the government should invest more in vocational centers. We are talking about the fourth industrial revolution, but uh, the country is not even prepared really just to, 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 to promote necessary skills in young people. They are prepared only to insult us when we go to demand for better living conditions for young people. I mean, asking us where our parents are. Why can we, why can our parents not uh, pay for us? Coming from the head of state, you can tell where the priority of the whole government is. Uh, irrespective of myself, who does not have a parent, hearing that from the head of state, it's devastating. The resources of this country are supposed to be shared equally, especially on the development of young people who are the future of the country. Now, if you have young people who are not educated, who are not given the necessary skills, we are likely to have a country that, is, that cannot even progress because we are not promoting necessary skills. Right here is the, the founding president, uh, Dr. Sam Shavishuna Nyoma, at uh, independence with the constitution book in his hand, in his right hand. Now, that constitution, uh, it is the supreme law of the Republic of Namibia. Though some of the current leaders call it a piece of paper, in that very same constitution is where the fundamental rights of each and every Namibian is enshrined. And the same constitution says that each and everyone has the right to take part in order to change the composition of government. So young people, uh, this must be, this must be now our fight. They should really, really think hard 
and then decide and make a choice. If they really want to change their situation, they really have to first take the bold step and change it themselves. They have the power because the power is in the people. In den letzten 31 Jahren fanden Namibianer ständig einen Weg, um Hindernisse zu überwinden. Over the past 31 years, Namibians have constantly overcome various challenges and obstacles. It is in the Namibian culture to overcome challenges. Namibians have the mentality to never give up. With this mentality, it is possible to believe that tomorrow can be better and tomorrow will be better if we stand together. Irrespective of the race, the religion, sexual orientation, or where you come from or what you do, it's important to make our opinions known without it turning into a fight or a disagreement, but rather embrace our differences to embrace what other cultures and other people with different backgrounds can bring to the table and to sit around that table, to sit and have a conversation and to talk about what we want to see and what it is that is important to each and every one of us to be as inclusive as possible. It's only possible to be inclusive if you know the person, if you know who you're talking to and who you're talking for. And if we don't get to know each other, if we don't spend time with people from different backgrounds, we will never be able to understand what it is that the country as a whole need. And that's where we start. Young people, this is my message to you. Right now, right now I know that uh, some of you are probably seated at, uh, at, your, at your houses, not even knowing what to do. I know some of you have probably dropped out of universities because uh, there's no one to pay for you. I know some of you are even thinking or you have probably even started grabbing people's bags and whatnot just to make a living for yourself. I also know that some of you have resolved to, you know, getting help from anyone else in exchange of uh, your bodies and whatnot. I do not blame you and I do not want to judge you because I would have done that myself if I could not have found myself well on time. But I want to tell you that there is hope. There is hope that we can really liberate ourselves and rule ourselves in a better way as Namibians in this country. Because this country can provide for the rest of us. This country can provide for generations and generations to come after us. Your voice matters. So please take part in our survey, share your opinion, because together we can change the future and save our country.